Hi, I want to make a video on a flippy floppy philosophy and how dealing with others and deal and under and how emotions obviously get in the way of how you deal with philosophy and how that can obviously cause people to flip flop based on their emotions and their uh, preconceived biases and how that can change and how all sorts of things can change based on a person's circumstances and it goes back to the whole idea of, of how we're dealing with constant frustration how we're dealing with certain circumstances based on the reality that we're living in and that's exactly what we're doing is dealing with frustration um, constantly changing ideas um, based on people's wishy-washy conceptualization and uh, how they have how, how very little conviction they have in certain ideas and how they just li sort of wash over it and change their ideas over and over again um, so it comes back to this idea and that's the cliche this is comes back to cliches and cliches can show up in any number of ways um, and wishy-washy kinds of uh, and being wishy-washy with your point of view um, breaking finally snapping not being able to take something anymore all of a sudden your principles change and you let that take over based on your emotions letting to get your control over you or letting something take over your principles your principles changing you're constantly changing but at a certain point when do we say those principles are done changing when do we say that those principles are no more are no longer they've reached a dead end when do we say they're good enough when do we say that this has finally reached the end and you know considering circumstances where you may have to break your principles where you're put in a, a sticky situation where you're 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 here you're in a, a situation between a rock and a hard place you can apply it to a lot of things where you're stuck and you're forced to choose something against your own will uh, but you're you're still applying your own your principles within a confined situation where you're forced to take some action one way or the other so you're still ad adhering to your principles and things like that but you're still um, but it's within a confines of a certain restriction that you have to deal with sort of like um, you can still have the principle that you don't want to kill anyone, but you're stuck in a situation where you have to kill this many people or this many people. So you choose the option that the circumstances where you feel, uh, obviously, the reasonable circumstances, the practical circumstances where you know if you didn't do anything, it would kill both people. You can't take that risk, so you, you, you qualify these things and quantify all these things in your head. You take into consideration, the best consideration in mind, you take what you get from that. The, practic uh, the pra most practical solution, the most practical solution is to choose the one either. It depends on if you're will to let everyone die, take the risk, die yourself, if your you're conviction, if your conviction, your principle to not let people die, um, but also let them die, or if, you, if you'd if you rather die and you had to die, and it's about letting yourself die, they say it's either kill yourself or kill these people, and if you kill yourself, you don't have to kill these people. It's either three options, kill more people, kill less people, um, um, either indirectly than directly, or kill yourself, and killing yourself, it's a matter of making that decision, so you kill yourself, um, but if you kill the, the lesser amount of people, um, you can save the, the greater amount of people in yourself and you can use it as a life lesson to hopefully prevent someone in the future and it's about making these way these taking these weights and choosing which one's better so it's about making these hard decisions between what you choose is right and how you can use those and how much you have to confine yourself based on these um, brick walls you run into and these um, between two brick walls that you're sandwiched between you have to choose something based on the, can, um, the restrictions that you have even based on some principle rock hard principles or um, conceptions or anything like that that you have and you have to work within the confines of a certain situation obviously you can try your best to break the situation but there's only so much you can do without taking with taking so much risk before you start causing more problems than the need to and understanding that risk is part of having these principles and understanding the evaluation of what you're doing evaluating what you're doing and understanding the consequences of everything that you're doing so that's obviously something we have to consider when understanding these kinds of things um, so that's exactly the point um, so flippy floppy kind of thing obviously people can be in tough places emotionally break or they can just change their opinions all of a sudden and that goes back to, you know and back to the cliche thing uh, you know all sorts of cliches leading up to where we are now and this is a cliche in and of itself when you start flipping flopping I mean and you can apply this kind of concept in terms of everyone how everything's a stereotype you're doing exactly what you'd expect someone to do the human cliche of doing something exactly letting your emotions get to you and everything but obviously we reverse react and there's nothing we can do we're being adherent to and that goes back to the frustration of being, um, and, and, you know, being controlled by these crew mechanisms controlling us, and there's nothing we can do about it but accept it. And there's nothing we can do but accept this interaction between things just bumping into each other, and we can't we can do nothing but be, you know, victims of. It. All we can do is try to mitigate it based on the collection of things working together, hoping that one thing leads to another, which would cause something better to happen, and mitigating as much as we can. That's the thing we can mitigate, but we can't completely eliminate. And there's still going to be something bad that happens. You're still going to eat something. And if you eat something, you're possibly taking away from someone else. So you're still, there's still going to be suffering. And there's nothing to do again to mitigate completely the suffering. Because if you were, there's no life happening. There's either 
you're either dronish, you're moving around, or you, there's no life happening at all because you've pretty much you prefaced that by saying you've eliminated life because there's nothing else going on. So if you can, there's no one to take anything from, then you're pretty much there's no one else living. Um, so if you've prefaced it with that, then you've pretty much defeated the point or break, broken the thought experiment and discussing that kind of thing. Um, so cliches, yeah, short here. Um, sometimes you're, you're sort of caught in these cliches, you're forced into cliches, you're balding, so you have to shave your hair to make yourself feel better. I mean, that's just horrible. How people have to contrive themselves, make themselves feel better by, you know, adhering to a standard where they feel like they have to contri put themselves into because it causes insecurity and things like that. And that's just horrible. I don't like that. I don't like seeing that happen. Um, they have to shave their hair because they have a bald spot, or they, um, they have to shave their, you know, or they have to grow a beard to compensate for it, or whatever it is, or, you know, or, um, you know, do certain things to compensate for other things and almost put themselves in a category, so it's like begging, it's a force by insecurity that causes these kinds of things as well. And it um, goes back to this, you know, it's cliche to think a certain way, let your emotions get to you, flipping, flopping, never being consistent with what you say and what you think, constantly changing your opinion. It's a constantly changing thing, but yeah, you have to have some foundation, you have to have some reason, um, some logical step that you take by which you can explain it. People can logically explain a way that uh, anyone can say, any even unreasonable person can say, my emotions got to me afterwards. Um, after they've, you know, they've let things cool down, any reasonable person, only the most extreme people wouldn't do this, is recognize that once you're, once you've let things take advantage of you, you can say, oh, I was just letting my emotions get to me, but you're still reacting the same way, and you're still believing something silly, um, so even the most unreasonable person can use the same old cliche excuse, um, that you would expect only the reasonable person to use. It's something that anyone can use, but it comes down to the fact that they let that thing happen to begin with, and, um, You've obviously had an argument, a disagreement, so they're obviously finding some disagreement based on what you said, taking it to the extreme, letting their emotions get escalating to a point, and letting it go from there, and, and letting your emotions take advantage of you, and saying that, then coming to the conclusion, anyone can apologize once they've cooled down, um, once they are not in the middle of some kind of heightened sense of um, ego, trying to you know fight your ego and saying I oh, I can't apologize to this person or I can't come to terms with uh, the person being right so I'm just going to reinforce my own beliefs even more um, and yeah so uh, flippy floppy flo you know fl philosophy and things like that and it constantly changing in points of view and that's how most people work and it depends on their mood and all of a sudden they change their standards change and you could just say this comes in based on mood obviously you can say anything we're, we're a different person every second that we move different personality something can happen all of a sudden we're changed um, we're constantly changing everything's fleeting moving forward you can change just in a bat, in the bat of an eye blink of an eye you can all of a sudden change into a different person and you're all of a sudden a different person from second to second based on your thoughts and experiences based on individual seconds and time moving forward fleeting and so on and so forth but also things can change um, based on a consistent you know memories obviously things that makes you you who you are as a memory and if there's an exact copy of you obviously it would be you but without the memory that had you it would be the same person it's just based on this memory this awareness this bodily front thing where I'm at this origin of this body this thing moving around in this cesspool moving around in this reality creating a hole into making me who I am and this awareness coming from this piece and it doesn't matter if it's there's an exact copy my facsimile of me over there an exact clone uh, it just says these memories you've injected my my memories into that person um, which obviously is hypothetical that couldn't happen you couldn't do that obviously some scientists want to believe that can happen but it's not gonna happen um, so injecting that idea and um, it's the same person as you it has the same mechanism that's doing it, it would do the exact same thing I'm doing right now it's every damage I take, the damage it would take, it has this exact copy, not an exact copy from, um, say, conception, but it's an exact copy. So if I get hurt, it has, it has all the same things, but it just has a different awareness of me. Um, it's, it's the same awareness, but it's a different awareness. It's like looking in the mirror, and instead of the reflection being a reflection, it's the facsimile of you just copying your doppelganger. Um, but it's just not your awareness. It's not coming from here. It's coming from the exact copy over there, the exact thing, the doppelganger, your shadow. Um... And if you died, keep on going and doing what you would do, almost in a way, replacing you. So, yeah, so flippy floppy philosophy, um, it's something that's pretty cliche. It's a thing that happens all the time. That's obviously based on we're a different person every second. Blah, 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 you know, same thing. We're the same thing. The boundaries are the same. I'm still this in this boundary, but it doesn't change the fact that, um, I'm, you know, my, my, my principles, whatever things that, advocate, that 
explain who I am, that prove who I am can change any minute. Obviously, goes like to the thoughts thing. Your thoughts change, leading to different actions, leading to different things, leading to different perceptions, different projections, different things. It's all very fleeting. You're different every moment. You leave thoughts behind. You leave actions behind. One thing leads to another. It's very fleeting. Once one thought's over, it leads to another thought. Obviously, the thought means something because it leads to this thought. But this thought, uh, the thought in the past is this. The thought in the past, and once you forget it, you only remember it. One, you, and once you forget it, you only think uh, remember the thought that you had once you remember it. So um, you you only understand the thought. You only come to a conclusion that you only remember the thought that you have, and you only remember that you forgot it once you remember it again. And it goes back to the idea, you live in bliss, but you don't know you're living in a bliss until you recognize the pain and deprivation that you were trying to avoid by, say, for, forgetting, um, you know, selectively um, not re uh, uh, amnesiaing yourself, non-memorizing something, and you only realize you're in bliss of avoiding such, say, a painful memory when you re remember the memory again. So you're, you're living in bliss, but you don't realize it, and that's almost the way people are living. They're living in a, in a lie. They, they, they know the game. They're being gamed by the game. They understand the game. They're being at the mechanisms of the game. I just recognize it perceptually, um, not just understanding it by philosophy. I perceptually recognize it. I perceptually feel it. It becomes part of my perception. It controls me. It's a mechanism that controls me. And that's a difference between, say, someone um, that, uh, say, perceptually recognizes it and people that just understand it by way of philosophy, by way of experience, by way of not necessarily experiencing it themselves, but understanding it based on, say, someone that they know, understanding empathy, understanding that someone is in pain, even though you haven't gone through the pain. That's the understanding that we need. We don't need the person that has to go through the pain to understand the pain. And there's obviously some examples of those, but the far more examples are the most, the, the people that actually um, are the people that understand it based on experiences they've seen in other people in the environment as opposed to inside themselves experiencing these things firsthand based on a perception. Um, so it's constantly moving, fleeting, moving forward. There's nothing we can do, constantly changing. Um, so yes, I think I made my point clear enough. So um, yeah, <laughs> um, anything else I want to say? So yeah, Leading, moving forward, nothing more than that. Um, doesn't matter. It's yeah. I, I don't know. It's. I think I made my points clear enough. So um, um, fleeting, moving forward, nothing more than that. Um, so facsimile, and it's the same. An understanding for a perception, and so on and so forth. So the perception controls you. This perception can control you and understanding it. And yeah, so anyway, that's all I need to say. So thank you until next time. I don't want to make this drag on. Until next time, bye.